Hi, my name is Wayne Guerra, and I'm the Chief Medical Officer of iTriage. A concussion is a mild head injury that results in some sort of a symptom. So, uh, you know, and the symptom could be right away, or it could be a day, an hour, or even, you know, a week later. If you're hit in the head and have loss of consciousness, then you've definitely had a concussion. That's, that's the easiest way, and that's the, everybody agrees on that. Uh, typically, other symptoms that you might have, uh, persistent headache, uh, nausea, uh, dizziness, um, you know, difficulty thinking, and um, that, that can happen right after the injury or it can continue or, or appear later on. Well, it's been shown that concussions, if not treated appropriately, especially in the early phase, can have uh, long-lasting uh, symptoms and even permanent uh, uh, damage, uh, especially around something called the second impact syndrome. So it's super important to have um, appropriate treatment. Uh, otherwise, especially in the um, uh, people, patients less than 18, um, they're especially vulnerable, uh, can have uh, significant uh, injury and permanent disability. Uh, typically, as I mentioned earlier, uh, first loss of consciousness, that's the easiest and sign that most people recognize. But being stunned and confused, so you get hit in the head, whether it's in sports, or fall, or running around a swimming pool, uh, being a little confused for anywhere from you know, a minute or more, uh, probably had a concussion, uh, so important to know. Uh, but other signs, um, you know, headache, irritability, change in behavior, um, a dizziness, uh, room spinning, uh, vomiting, difficulty concentrating on tasks that you normally can do quite easily. Uh, those are all the typical symptoms of a uh, concussion. We really get to think of concussion in two phases. The, the acute phase, like right after the injury, and then you know something that maybe you're thinking about later on, like a couple of days later. If the patients, you know, had been hit in the head, had a loss of consciousness, is having a headache, probably need to go to an emergency department because you might need a CAT scan to make sure that, uh, you know, there, there isn't bleeding in the brain or some other bruise in the brain that, that's causing those symptoms. Because typically with a concussion, you don't really see anything on a CAT scan. Um, but let's say it's a couple days later and there's a persistent headache, it's not getting worse, um, but, or the patient's just not, uh, you know, feeling well, some dizziness or room spinning, then it's appropriate to go to an urgent care clinic or your primary care doctor. Certainly, if you have access to your primary care doctor, uh, you can always call them and ask them whether this is the best place to go. Well, the best treatment is rest, and, and not just physical rest, but mental rest. In fact, the American um, Academy of Pediatrics recommends the children that have concussion that don't even play any video games, don't get on their computer uh, and, and try not to do any you know, difficult mental tasks. Uh, what, what typically we'll do is, uh, again, the, the most important thing here is to prevent another head injury while you're still, or while the patient's still having symptoms of concussion. That, again, can, can cause uh, long-lasting permanent disability and in the second impact syndrome the brain can swell and rarely the patient can even die, even from, from a minor injury on top of a previous concussion. So super important to rest, prevent any further head injury, so you know, avoid any sports or activities that could cause you to have another head injury. Um, typically what uh, providers will do is they'll let you exercise a little or let the patient exercise a little bit and see if the symptoms come back. If the symptoms come back, then they wait and they wait another week. If the, if the patient then progressively can do more and more exercise before they, or and not have any symptoms, then they will continue to advance the level of effort until they're able to actually do the activity again, whether it's skiing or riding a bike or, or playing a contact sport. Well, as mentioned earlier, you know, permanent symptoms, right? So chronic headaches, chronic cognitive disabilities. In fact, some trauma centers will even do um, psychological testing after the initial injury. 
and get a baseline and then measure that, make sure that later on the patient's uh, fully recovered. So, uh, and, and that you, so, you know, chronic irritability, um, uh, chronic uh, uh, nausea vomiting, so it can be, if not treated appropriately, it can be a long lasting and serious effects. Important thing is in any activity they do, make sure they're wearing, if it's appropriate, you know, uh, protection for the helmet. So bike riding, any sports they're doing, riding rollerblades. Uh, simple things, just don't let them run around the pool, right? Many, many kids get a concussion just running around the pool and, and slipping. Uh, if your child's really young, don't let them walk up into high spaces on tables by themselves. Make sure you, you, you know, get them off there or at least accompany them and hold their hand if you have to walk in a high space. So it's really prevention is the best way to do this and, and think about could they injure themselves and if it's an activity they're going to do anyway, are they being protected appropriately? And then if they have a concussion already, make sure that you see a doctor so that they're cleared and before they go back to their activities.